Welcome to the Monkey Mind Podcast, your number one platform for athletes and mental health. Hosted by myself, Danny Perez. This is episode 73 featuring Jake Grade. Jake is a professional hockey player from Falmouth, Maine, who played his college hockey at St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire. Jake is signed to play for the Evansville Thunderbolts in the SPHL for the upcoming season. But before we get to today's episode, we have a quick word from our sponsor. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Daily Dose CBD Inc. Daily Dose CBD Inc. creates full-spectrum CBD products ranging from tinctures, bombs, and dog treats. Research has shown that CBD has successful results in aiding in the following areas. Anti-inflammation, anxiety, PTSD, help with breaking addiction, neuroprotection, epilepsy, arthritis, chronic pain, and sleeping disorders. Daily Dose makes an extremely safe and effective product that we know you will love, enjoy, and benefit from. Daily Dose has given Monkey Mind listeners 15% off all their orders. Head over to DailyDoseCBDInc.com and use promo code MONKEYMIND15 for 15% off your purchases. That's promo code MONKEYMIND15 for 15% off all your orders at DailyDoseCBDInc.com. All right, we got Jake Great on today. Um, yeah, man, welcome. Excited to have you on. I know we've been trying to do this for a while, but glad it's finally working out. Yeah, I think it's been well over a year, right? Seriously, I think yeah. playing men's league up in Portland. Yeah, exactly, which was last summer, so. No, I'm excited to have you on, Vitas. Please introduce yourself to everybody who you are and a little bit about yourself and, you know, your hockey career and all that. Yeah. Um, so my name is Jake Grid. I'm from uh, Falmouth, Maine. Grew up playing youth hockey here in Maine for Casco Bay. Um, went to high school, Falmouth High School in Maine. Had a good time there. Um, ended up doing one year juniors, playing for Valley in the EHL. Wasn't the EJ, EHL. Yep. Um, did four years at St. A's um, in Manchester, New Hampshire, and then just played last year, my first year pro out in Cholet, France. Yeah, now you're uh, signed for next year? Yeah, signed for next year. I'm playing out in Evansville, Indiana, uh, in the SP for the Thunderbolts. Unreal. Yeah, how, uh, how was your experience out in France? It was awesome, dude. I mean, France, is, I mean, COVID obviously played its role, but yep. – um, can be worse places to be in COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, it was good. I mean, the season was good. We started off um, playing normally, and then we had a break from, like, end of October till probably, like, beginning February. Cause the oh, really? It was on lockdown, and so we didn't even play a game for that period. We were just on the ice and in the gym every day. It was kind of like Groundhog Day for, like, three months wow. in the middle and, of the winter. So, and that was – you said the team was on lockdown or the city was on lockdown? It was the whole country, actually, because COVID was so bad over there. Huh. So that happened, and then we started up in February. We only had, like, an 18-game season after that, I think, something like that. But, I mean, I had a really good roommate, Ryan Tate. Shout out, Tate. Um, do you know Tater? He knows. I just know him from playing against him and mutual friends, but I don't know him well. I don't ever met him, but I do know who that is, yeah. Um, yeah, so he was – I mean, he made it much more enjoyable. We were – good to have each other I mean it was better to be with an American being over there during COVID so yeah for sure it been worse. it was a great time all around though no of course especially with a lot of guys like being out of jobs too and just being able to keep playing and obviously Seriously. being a sick spot too so yeah I mean it's definitely not easy to get a job right now so yeah as well do it for as long as I can 100 <laughs> percent no I, I hear you on that but um yeah obviously kind of switching gears here about you know Athletes and mental health kind of, um, yeah, segue into that and kind of talk about your story and um, maybe some of the things that you struggle with and, um, yeah, just your story with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a big part of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, you know, it hasn't been too long that I've really opened up about it, though, because, you know, I think for a lot of people that's kind of the hardest part is, you know, accepting that you know, I'm going through some stuff mentally here and it's okay and you can seek help and there's ways to cope with it and all that. And so, you know, I was, a lot of people that know me now know that I lost my father when I was like five years old. Um, so kind of from a young age, you know, I kind of started off with that anxiety. I think I was diagnosed with like clinical anxiety since like middle school. So, and, you know, obviously my mom at the time wanted me to get help and all that, but I just kind of didn't really understand it at that point. Um, so, you know, growing up and, 
seeing people like Robin Lennar, the goalie for the can or the Knights or whatever, like stuff like that just kind of helps you realize that, you know, what you're going through is normal. And um, I mean, I know it's cliche to say, but it, it, people who go through it, it's tough to get to that point. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, growing up, it was kind of tough and, you know, the past year or so I've really started to seek help for it and it's just made my life so much more manageable and um yeah I mean gets better every day but you know how, how it is it's a battle and of course um yeah it's something that's tough I mean where was I going with that uh basically just like I don't know being being around the biggest thing for me is just managing um the biggest thing I've learned recently is managing, you know, the stress factors around you and, you know, realizing, okay, this causes stress. Like, so is it that important in your life? This group of people, I don't know. I've just kind of learned that keeping a tight circle with, you know, people that you're really, really tight with and that understand what you're going through and really are there to help is really important because, you know, you have a lot of buddies, you know, you go to school with, you talk may talk about it with them here or there and you know they're like oh we're here for you this and that but you know only a few true people understand it and I felt that the past few years that that was really important to me is just finding the right people in my life who will help you know eliminate those factors and you know life's too short to just live like that yeah no I mean that's a common theme though what you said about um <clears throat> just kind of having anxiety growing up, but not really understanding fully what it was. And then, kind right. of the, you know, the older you get, you start to realize what it is. And um, I mean, for me, it would always manifest and get like worse as I got older. And like, right. obviously life's problems kind of, or just like life stressors in general can become unmanageable. Well, and that's when you got to yeah. kind of understand like, okay, like, you know, like you said, like those stress triggers for you. So um, for you, how would you say that your anxiety manifested? Because for me, it was always just like, shortness of breath kind of getting claustrophobic and you know like puking and kind of like that sort of it was like a physical thing for me obviously but um what was it like for you what was your experience with it honestly pretty similar I mean um tightness of my chest and shortness of breath is like probably the most common thing um another thing I always struggle with and it's usually when I first can tell I'm starting to get anxiety is my hands get real sweaty mm -hmm. that's kind of the first indicator for me and and, you know, it goes to the tightness in the chest, shortness of breath. Um, and, you know, obviously those who have experienced the panic or anxiety attack, then you get, you know, the numbness in your face, your fingers um, feel almost like feelings of a heart attack almost. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, yeah, just, you know, like sweaty hands and then, shortness of breath I get a lot of like acid reflux from anxiety too so like what you said with like puking is sometimes I can like get heartburn from stress and it can lead to that so that was a big thing with me in hockey was when I would have anxiety playing hockey it was a lot of puking and people would be like what the f like what's going on with yeah that? but it's just because it was a physical reaction to my anxiety um, yeah which, you know, that's the toughest part is the physical. Because when you can feel it, that's what really scares you. Yeah, it's a super scary feeling when you're kind of going through something like that. And you just don't know how to really kind of calm yourself or relax. Yeah, it's super overwhelming. <laughs> and like, like I said, I mean, the, only the past few years have really been working at it. But just like when you start to feel it, for me, um, I'll kind of segue into, you know, how I've started to develop ways to manage it and you know one thing that I my mom had me doing from a young age was seeing a therapist and that was something for a long time that I was really embarrassed about because you know I don't know but a lot of people just when they get a therapist think it's soft think it's this think it's that but you know, having someone that's unbiased and knows what they're doing, they're professionals. Um, they've really, I, this woman I've been seeing for a long time, she 
saw me through middle school when I didn't want any help at all. And I was difficult. Um, and, you know, through high school, college, saw her here and there, but these past year or so, I've been seeing her pretty consistently. And like I said, having an unbiased opinion to talk to that, like I said, is a professional and really knows what she or he is doing, um, really just helped me realize that it's normal and that there are ways that work that will help cope with the anxiety. Because one of the biggest things for me when I started really feeling like serious anxiety was, it, is it going to go away? Like you, your mind starts to race. You're wondering, are you going to recover from this? Are you going to have a heart attack even at times? Cause it can be so bad. Um, so, you know, talking to her and just having a professional like teach me ways to go about daily life, feeling anxiety and having ways to manage it that you can just do, you know, sitting in your car or sitting in public somewhere. Um, and for me, I know, I don't know, a lot of people have obviously different ways, but for me, I've really found that just like a lot of breathing exercises works the best for me. And again, really cliche breathing exercises, but being able to actually just sit there for, you know, even five minutes and, you know, feeling your body on whatever surface you're on, feeling what your feet are touching, like coming into tune with your breath going in and out and expanding and whatever. And that's, I've found that that helps me the most because that's a tool that I can use anywhere. Um, like I said, driving, you start to feel anxious. You just relax for a few minutes, come in tune with your body. And, mm -hmm. um, that's been what's helped me the most really. Yeah. I'm happy you mentioned that. I actually just learned that this week. I mean, just kind of like a specific breathing technique and that's five seconds in through the nose and then five seconds out through the mouth. But when you breathe, you want to expand your stomach. Right. Um, so get it all the way down into your stomach and really expand yeah. your lungs. And you do that for five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, and just lay on your bed and do it right in, right in the morning or right before bed. You know, it's, yeah. your, it's a nice quiet time. You can do it. And right. it really helps kind of regulate your body and, um, you know, pump the brakes. Cause obviously we have the two different systems. It's right. the sympathetic and parasympathetic, right. And one's the gas, yeah. one, the brake. And yeah. doing those breathing tactics or the, the techniques kind of really help you kind of pump the brakes on your body and, you can do those when you get those flare ups as well. So I'm happy that you mentioned the breathing techniques because it's something so simple. Like you said, you could do it anywhere, but right. we, we lose track of it and we just kind of like panic, but it's a way to kind of get back in tune. Exactly. And I mean, for me, I don't know with you, but it did kind of take practice because, you know, just breathing is breathing. It's something you do 24 seven, obviously. And being able to actually do that and come in tune with your body and feeling, you know, breathing in, inhaling, exhaling, being able to feel that really just kind of, for me, centers me mm -hmm. and kind of calms me down. But I liked what you said, because I don't really, you know, I've never really done a schedule of it, but five minutes day and night, I'm definitely going to start doing that because, you know, waking up is sometimes can be stressful. You have a busy day. You're like, Oh shit, I got this to do. I got this to do. I got to go. I got to shower. I got to do this. got to do that. So I actually really like that. I think starting your day with breathing definitely is a very good technique just to manage everyday stress and kind of beat it before it comes. Yeah, no, it's something I've just started implementing last week. So I just found out about it, but um, cause we have a sports psych here that I spoke with and I think it's just super beneficial so far from what I've been, you know, cause you just kind of get up and rush immediately right into your day, but if you take a couple of seconds to kind of just get in tune and take a, take a pause and just, not feeling so rushed it helps you leaving your phone down right when you wake up you know just forgetting about that take a few minutes to breathe i really like that yeah, yeah. no definitely i think you should definitely try it i think everyone listening should definitely try it too because it does help um and i liked how you mentioned that um you know you, you kind of like felt these feelings of like oh am i soft or for going to a therapist when you know one thing that i've realized just by recording these episodes is that people come out of the woodwork with just things that they struggle with in private and right. I've started to realize that everyone's gone through something and it may not be the same as me. It may not be the same as you, but I think it's just normalizing that everyone has something that kind of stresses them out or causes them to feel anxious at times. And it may not be the worst thing in the world. It may not be, you know, like the smallest thing in the world, but there's someone on some level of the spectrum and it's just completely normal to go through it. 
Right. So like, while you may be feeling those feelings, there's absolutely no reason to, you know, it's like, we make it like, it's such a big deal, but it's really not. It's really not. And like, that's the other thing I was going to say is that everyone does go through it. And, you know, just because me or, you know, whoever is diagnosed with more serious anxiety than the next guy, you know, being on medication doesn't always necessarily help. Like I've been on medication for a couple of years and, you know, my brother feels the same stress that I have, but he hasn't, you know, he doesn't need anything. It's kind of just, I've found that, you know, medication can definitely help. It's proven to help it um, day to day, but, you know, being able to be in tune with your body and realizing that when you get anxiety, that it's going to go away and that it's normal and that you have ways to manage it is just like the most important thing. Oh, yeah. You can have anxiety and you can just wake up and take a pill every morning. But if you're not really practicing those techniques and you get in the moment when, you know, you are going to have a panic attack or you're having serious anxiety, like that pill you take every morning isn't going to do anything. Oh, 100%. I totally agree. And that's why finding these tactics are so, I think, I'm not saying that because I think medication is important if needed. But like you said, you can't just take that every time and you have to right. be relying on actual tools that are going to benefit you and not saying that that's not a, a good legit tool. It obviously is, but um, having those techniques that are in your corner and in your toolbox, that you can rely on to get you out of those small little instances of situations where things get really out of hand. It, they're super beneficial. Um, yeah. You kind of mentioned just like the various stressors of life and um, obviously like with hockey and obviously there's stressors that come with that. What are some of the things that would kind of stress you out as far as those things go that would kind of make your anxieties flare up and kind of how have you found yourself, um, you know, mitigating that and getting your brain, you know, I guess, signaling your body that these stressors aren't as big of a deal. You mentioned life's so short. That's something that I've kind of realized that kind of reflecting on my hockey career, I've always been like so worried and applying so much pressure and it's yeah. like, God, I forgot to enjoy it sometimes. You know what I mean? So now that you're still in it and you're involved, like what are some of the things that would kind of stress you out and how are you kind of, um, you know, mitigating those, those stressful effects? I mean, obviously being a hockey player, it's a tough sport and you're not going to be perfect. So, you know, I like to be as perfect as can be and, you know, having already, you know, serious anxiety on top of that, you know, for me, one of the hardest things, and I know it's, so simple but it's just recovering from a mistake and you know one thing that I really used to help honestly was you know just breathing taking a few deep breaths on the bench after you know you turn a puck or you have a bad shift whatever um for me I found just you know taking a few deep breaths on the bench um has helped me a lot and you know aside from that is just stressors in life you know obviously taking a test you get stressed out or for me one thing that stressed me out is traffic so being in traffic can you know even though it's really not a big deal I think my brain is kind of trained to know that all right he's in traffic you're gonna get anxious now so for me just like realizing this is one thing actually I practiced my therapist was writing down times that I felt anxious and realizing you know what specific things made me anxious and what are ways in those situations that I can help manage and um, I mean I don't really know specifics because honestly I was going to say that a lot of my anxiety just it can be random like I can be doing absolutely nothing and all of a sudden it comes on like my arms start to sweat chest gets tight um so, I mean, like I said, I didn't practice these things for a long time. So being able to just, you know, have these tools in your back pocket. Mm. Um, another one for me was instead, if you know, you're in like a public setting and you can't really take deep breaths, whatever is, you know, your sensory stuff. So one of the things we practiced my therapist was what are five things you can see? Yep. What are four things you can feel? What are some things you can taste? What are some things you can hear? This and that. And it's kind of just, for me, I thought it was stupid at first, but after practicing it, it all it does is it just kind of brings you back into tune with your body. Mm-hmm. And 
um, that's kind of been another thing that's really helped me is because I, at times will get social anxiety for no reason, you know, I'm a confident guy, whatever this and that, but it's just having anxiety. It comes and goes like, you just got to kind of be ready for it in any situation. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I love what you said about the, um, the five things you can see, the four things you can, whatever smell. Right. Um, Cause that's like a great, I think, I think it's a grounding technique. I'm sure. Or it's like, I'm not sure what exactly it's called, but it is an actual useful technique that kind of just like puts you back. Something. Yeah. It's a mindfulness technique that kind of puts you back into your surroundings and gets you out of your head, gets, gets you back into your, you know, surroundings into your body and kind of like touching um, the couch that you're on or whatever the case right. is, those things really do benefit along with the breathing, like you said. So I am I'm happy to mention that as well. Um, yeah. I think that, yeah. Uh, one, those thing, are I mean, one thing that my therapist also turned me on to was it's actually an app just called mindfulness. So anybody okay. with, you're looking for something, it's free. It's you do like, you can do like five, 10 minutes or however much you want a day. And it's just like simple little exercises and they kind of walk you through it ways to, you know, leave your body with breathing and kind of feel yourself like going into the couch and coming out of it with every breath, stuff like that. Um, so it's called mindfulness. I've found it very helpful. It's something like you said, you can wake up, take five minutes to do some breathing, roll over, do that for a few minutes, start your day or have five minutes in the middle of the day to do it. Um, I've found it very helpful and it's, just something so little but it has helped a lot yeah no that's great uh everyone listening please check that out because that is awesome i used to use headspace and that was a meditation app um but that sounds awesome too sure. what is the name of it honestly it might be headspace is it like this uh, orange oh, yeah, circle it is, it is headspace okay mindfulness. yeah <laughs> i know that's it, awesome yeah, yeah. I, I used to use that a lot so and it's great because it keeps you know they have like the tracker obviously you gotta keep keep your track record of, you know, how many days in a row you're doing. And it's, right. uh, it has a bunch of different like cartoons in it as well. That kind of, that's actually where I got the name monkey mind from. Cause he has like the animation of monkey jumping around and like trying to cage it. And you're trying to cage oh, your thoughts, God. but you should let them run free and then breathe and kind of let them kind of simmer down a bit. Right. But that those little cartoons that they have are actually awesome because they kind of put a little perspective on, what your thoughts are. Obviously you can't see your thoughts. So it kind of gives you like a visual on how your brain sort of operates and cool little funny yeah, ways that they, they illustrate it. That, Cause I've always been like a visual learner. So it's uh -huh. really cool. that kind of stuff on the app has like kind of helped me too. It's good just seeing it. Cause like you said, you can't see your thoughts. It's hard to visualize them. And that's kind of, yeah, it's funny that you say that. Cause that's actually something that's helped me the past couple of weeks. Oh yeah, man. It's crazy. I, I've always struggled with that, but just feeling physically super shitty for lack of a better term, like when I was super young, right. but never understanding why. Yeah. And cause that's how it manifests for me. But then the older I got, I've started to notice, like you mentioned, like just the various little triggers around me or just situational things in life. And then I could kind of start to piece together the puzzle. Right. But it still kind of wouldn't really make too much sense. But, um, yeah, like those, like those visual cues of, you know, like the animations kind of really help you understand kind of what's actually, you know, what your thought process looks like in a, you know, in a visual form with the monkeys right. jumping around and how yeah, yeah. you think you have to like trap and like stop like thinking, but it actually makes yeah. it worse. Um, but by just kind of slowing down, breathing, doing the techniques that you mentioned, right? That you just kind of let them kind of simmer down instead of trying to cage them. And, you know, that's, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more about that all that whole thing um i was just when you were saying bring up the monkey thing kind of reminded me of another technique that honestly my high school hockey coach taught us um and you know it wasn't even he didn't really direct it towards anxiety he wasn't saying this is a way to deal with anxiety but it's kind of a way that i've held on to for this has been that was in what 2013 almost 10 years now that i've been doing it again, it's easy, but it's hard to practice, um, is compart compartmentalizing. Okay. And do you know what that is, basically? I kind of have an idea, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend I do, but. No, it's kind of basically, like, obviously, like, you have your mind, and there's different parts of your mind, so if something's coming up, like, he made us 
practice it just so that we could focus on playing hockey. But basically it's like, you're going out, you have a game, you're thinking about, Oh, I have this upcoming test. It's like, okay, yes, that's something that you're going to have to worry about, but being able to actually compartmentalize it, like taking that actual thought in your head and like moving it to the back of your mind and just remembering it for later, but realizing that it's not important in the specific situation at this moment in time and, you know, saving it for later, knowing that, yes, it's nothing you can, you know, sweep under the rug, but um, it's not important in this moment. And, you know, that's some, a lot of my anxiety is future stressors thinking about, I got to do this. I got, this upcoming, I got a deadline here. I got a deadline there. I have this appointment, whatever it can be. And even though it's not a big deal, it's like being able to, you know, realize, like I said, this certain thought, this certain worry isn't relevant to what's going on Mm -hmm. there for later. Um, That's been a technique that, like I said, my high school hockey coach taught us, but it's something I've used for a long time and it does work. No, yeah, that's great. I've been using something similar to that. And that's just kind of like with very large looming things. And like for you, it's with the future with me, I get very anxious about it at times. But I've just kind of done that and shifted my mindset and try to segment everything. And I I like to write things down. So I like journal and I'll write things down. Like, do. You like to journal, you said? I'm a big list guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so I, I do the exact same thing. And it kind of helps me see it visually on a piece of paper. Right. And I break down what I need to do to kind of get that task done. And then I just right. take them off, take them off, take them off. That way I take it out of my head, put it on paper. So it's kind of very similar to yours. Um, and I find that, that helps me so much. And also just like shifting my mindset that, you know, nothing in life that, you know, is worth it is going to be easy. So just kind of right. running, running into these challenges with a full head of steam, as opposed to letting it consume me physically and like mentally and, you know, make, right. you know, my brain go insane exactly and it's almost like a way of satisfaction like you know you're not just doing nothing all day you're getting stuff done you're you know like you said checking things off the list and visually seeing you know all right I got this over with like now I can focus on this um yeah and that's kind of like you said that is kind of similar to the compartmentalization is just you know realizing you can't focus on two things at once. It's like yeah. in hockey, like if you're gonna, if you're going into a game and you have whatever, something really big looming over you and that's all that's on your mind, you're not gonna perform. And it's the same way with life. Like if you're, you know, if your mind's somewhere else, you're not gonna benefit from where you are. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I think a lot of people are um, so guilty of it. It's just too end goal focused as opposed to process focused. And then it just causes stress from that and not, you know, maybe falling short of what you want or whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to just focus on the process and kind of do the best you can in the now to achieve right. what you want in the future and not get too hung up on that. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, easier said than done for sure. Of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Like I'm not going to sit here and say I'm preaching. Like I got it all figured out because by no means I do, but no, not I'm even. getting there little by little, you know? Exactly. Piece by piece. Yeah. How, how do you find, um, do you utilize routine to your advantage and structure or is that something that's not really kind of overly beneficial for you? Or is it something that you've realized like, okay, this could be something that almost like a personal life hack for you. Cause for me, I think routine and structure, I, I thrive in that. And when I'm not, I get a little awry and, you know, mentally. So I got to make sure I'm dialed in on that. But do you find that that is beneficial for you or um, not so much? Honestly, not so much in terms of routine. Like I like to, for me, it's more a list. Like I said, is, mm-hmm. you know, having, I got this to do today. Um, but, you know, if my buddy calls me up, yo, let's go play 18 holes. All right, that's fine. I'll go do that. I'll work out afterwards or, you know, yep. I'll wake up a little earlier. I'll go, or you got work, you got this and that in the middle of the day. I'm just kind of always, and it's weird because I have such bad anxiety, but I have been pretty good at just kind of going with the flow and yep. um, taking one thing at a time. Like I said, having, you know, I got this to do today, just make sure it gets done. Yeah. Um, so, you know, routine, I mean, it's hard to say though, because 
playing hockey your whole life, you're in a routine. You got to work out all summer, you got to skate, and you got your season, this and that. So one thing that's been stressing me out is, you know, when I'm done with hockey and realizing that, you know, I'm not going to be with a team. I'm not going to be skating every day. It's going to be different than I'm going to be in an office or whatever I do. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the routine that I'm kind of worried about, almost like a quarter life crisis type deal. Like when, oh, yeah. I'm, when I'm done playing hockey, like what's that routine going to be? Cause I have buddies that only played, you know, hockey up to high school and like, they may have played other sports, but you know, when they got to college and didn't have that kind of team camaraderie, like they found it really difficult, especially with the structure of, you know, you got practice, you got gym, it's at a certain time. Like you have set times, you have to be at certain obligations at certain times, you can't be late. So, you know, coming out of hockey, I think, I mean, I'm not there yet, but one thing I'm practicing is, you know, realizing that, it's okay if things aren't completely structured mm -hmm. um, because like I said, being done with hockey, you're not going to have practice at seven o'clock every day, gym at whatever. It's going to be more, you're in the office, but then it's like, you don't have to work out. You're not obligated to, no one's going to hold you to it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. So you know, that's when you bring up structure, that's kind of what I think of in terms mm -hmm. of feeling anxious about things being out of order. But day to day, I've kind of had a good job of just um, kind of going with what comes, whatever comes at me. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah, being done with hockey is something that no one really can ever be prepared for. Um, right. We actually had a kid that I played with, uh, Dan Milan, and he just kind of mentioned his two cents on that. And I think it's super important. And it was just that find your other interests outside of hockey before you're retired. And obviously, right. You know, play for as long as you can. Um, but obviously everyone says it and it's true is that it does come to an end, but if you have other interests outside of hockey that kind of keep you, I guess, young, so to speak, the way, same way the game does um, that transition becomes a little bit easier. Cause it's kind of, we obviously put all our eggs in this basket. And then when it comes to an end, it's like a screeching halt. And then like, Oh my God, I have nothing. You know what I mean? And then right. not, not much is holding you accountable either. I mean, oh. obviously life can hold you accountable at times in itself, but as far as the same way, like you, like you mentioned about hockey. So the big thing he said was just, you know, make sure you're finding other things that you're interested in now because if hockey right. is the only thing you're passionate about and then you don't have it anymore, it's, it's pretty tough. But yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more what you said about the whole, like you, know, you have a 7 a.m. lift and then a, 845 skate or 830 skate like there's that is gone um, yeah so it's just about holding yourself accountable you know yeah and finding other ways to you know be busy and have fun and enjoy life is so important too because you know I've been fortunate enough to like be golfing fishing most of my sure. life I have that stuff to do when I'm not playing hockey but you know I'm sure you have some people you're not not trying to call anyone out but you know you got some buddies who you go to college with and they get out of college and they're still you know doing the same shit every weekend as if they're in a dorm party and it's like yeah you know, at some point you kind of gotta realize what's important what makes you happy and you know growing up is tough yeah really tough um so yeah you hit the nail on that with that having other passions other hobbies aside from hockey is so important because like you said, you can get out of it and be like, what am I doing with my life? Oh yeah. Trust me. I completely dealt with that. So I know yeah. it wholeheartedly. It's been, it's been a rough transition, but um, I'm slowly finding, finding the way and everyone obviously does. And um, you know, there's no mountain too tall to climb. So, I mean, I think everyone's obviously capable of doing that, but yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with what you said. And, yeah, I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time here, and I do appreciate you coming on and taking the time to chat, but um, what's, you know, we kind of end it. What's one piece of advice that maybe you'd give to your younger self or someone who's going through a really difficult time or dealing with anxiety or maybe dealing with the same things that you've gone through? Just, you know, one piece of advice or a couple pieces of advice, just kind of like a, a final, you know, thing that you'd want, you know, yeah. someone to know. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to seek help. And, you know, I knew I had anxiety. I didn't really understand what it was, but I knew I had it. And 
I think the biggest piece of advice to anyone that's kind of going through it is, you know, seek help. Like there's nothing wrong with it. And it's completely normal to be going through anxiety or, you know, depression or whatever it may be. And there's people out there that want to help you. Like aside from therapists, there's people in your life that, you know, really do care and want to help you and want to better your life and reduce stress and help you find ways to do that. So, you know, I think the biggest part for me is just, or the biggest piece of advice from me would be just to accept it and, you know, seek the help because bottling it up isn't going to get you anywhere. Yeah, man, that's spot on. Hit the nail on the head. And I like what you mentioned earlier too, about just kind of going off that point about how the genuine people in your life, a lot of people say that they're going to be there for you, but it's one thing to say it and one thing to actually be there for somebody. And, um, you know, yeah, those gotta words can uh, got to keep a tight circle. Exactly. And people that you trust. And, um, right. So that's all that spot on and awesome, man. And again, I can't thank you enough for coming on, taking the time to, to just chat about this stuff and be vulnerable. Obviously it's never easy, but I think you've, you know, showed a lot of courage saying, you know, talking about this stuff. And I think you said a lot of great things that a lot of people can you know, kind of take away from this and have some new tools that they can add into their arsenal to, you know, help themselves out. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me, dude. I'll see you soon.